This is the announcement that Joe Biden will not be happy to hear. Uh, and it also shows how incredibly divided this country is. They would have to be willing to say what you have said on your show. I think we've all said a version of it. You have to be willing to vocalize that these Republicans are dangerous, that this isn't a party that's just another political party that disagrees with us on tax policy, that at this point, they're dangerous. They're dangerous to our national security because stoking that kind of soft white nationalism eventually leads to the hardcore stuff. It leads to the January 6th stuff because if people are tolerant of it in your party, they're tolerant of the soft racism, it's a really short trip to get to the January 6th insurrectionist. I think that the, the real ominous thing is that critical race theory, which isn't real, turned the suburbs 15 points to the Trump insurrection endorsed Republican. There he is, Terry McAuliffe. He's, you know, he's, he's the energizer bunny of the Democratic Party, but he it looks like he is, uh, this may be the end of, the, of his career. Look, I think that he did not run a campaign that fit his time and that fit the, the, the state. I think that uh, he was trying to run against Donald Trump and this guy was able to, to run a, 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 as a champion for parents. It takes the exhausted, you know, voter who wants to vote on what is fundamentally a racist idea, right? That you cannot teach the truth about Thomas Jefferson. You must give encomiums to Thomas Jefferson in school. Otherwise, that's critical race theory. If you even talk about enslavement, that's critical race theory. Anything that makes a white parent uncomfortable is critical race theory. And you're absolutely right. He's been very subtle and very slick. That Toni Morrison ad was too much of a blunt hammer. Mm -hmm. But everything he did up to then, I totally agree with you. He's found a way to launder a pretty racist trope, this idea that we we cannot talk about America's history because it hurts my feelings. He's turned that into a campaign. And I think what Democrats have to worry about is if he succeeds mm. and he wins, that is going to be the campaign model for every single Republican that's running in 2020. Well, I think First of all, it's not over. Um, you do have the, the grassroots uh, folks out there uh, fighting for this on the Democratic Party side. The stakes are high. Uh, when this election is over in Virginia, we will know. Have we seen the emergence of the Delta variant of Trumpism? The Delta variant of Trumpism. In other words, Yunkin, uh, same disease, but spreads a lot faster and can get a lot more places. If you, if you look at what he's doing, he is playing footsie with the worst of Trumpism. The, he's, he's putting himself forward as a champion of parents. He's, he, this is a referendum on parents' rights. But he's not talking about, but he's, he's using the, all the critical race theory, uh, uh, head fakes and head nods, which is a softer version of a very uh, a virulent kind of anti-black uh, 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 posture. And so I think we're, we're, uh, t this is a very big deal because if this is a pathway, if you can flirt with Trumpism, if you can flirt with Trump and still, put, and, and still win in the suburbs, that's a new development for us. If you're saying education is the most important issue, you might be a black voter who says, I'm defending great literature mm -hmm. and defending Toni Morrison. And I don't like the idea that Youngkin wants to be a governor that would purge those books. What's next? The biography of Dr. King is W.E.B. Du Bois next. I mean, Dr. King said America might go to hell. Are we going to erase any of his, you know, his more um, sort of robust commentary on America? What Youngkin has done is he put it in a disguise. Yes. He gave it a fake name mm -hmm. and his candidacy is wrapped in two big lies. One is this half truth. I'm I flew an insurrection flag at my rally, but oh, Trump's at right. arm's length. Arm length. There's Trump. Yeah. And the second big lie is that his his. I watched his rally last Saturday. His his campaign promise, and he was making this promise in Loudon and in Alexandria is on day one. I'm going to ban critical race theory. That is like us banning the ghosts. Right. There are no ghosts. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we can say, you know what, 7 p.m. we're banning the ghosts. There are no ghosts. There isn't critical race theory talk. But what exactly. he's done is he's laundered Trump's really sort of disgusting, flagrant out yep. racism. He's wrapped it in education. Yep. I watched Glenn Youngkin's interviews on Fox News, and he did nothing that Claire's He did not. I mean, he worshipped at the altar of Donald Trump on Fox News. He flew an insurrection flag at his rallies. He simply didn't, he played dumb about a, 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 a Zoom rally. He did not really put much distance between himself and Donald Trump on the big lie or the deadly insurrection. I think that the, the real ominous thing is that critical race theory, which isn't real, turned the suburbs 15 points 
to the Trump insurrection endorsed Republican. What do Democrats do about that? 